Hi, hello, and welcome. I am definitely not Vlad, and you're watching me pug my way to 2.8k rating on an Enhancement Shaman in Dragonflight Season 2. Before we get started with the episode, I'd like to remind you that at the top of the description, you can click on a link to take you to the poll where you can decide which class I get to heal as in Dragonflight Season 3. With that out of the way, the focus for this episode is to actually hit 2.8k rating. I'm recording this on a Tuesday, so it's still the same week for me. You're watching this on a Thursday, I think? Yeah, Thursday. We have absolutely no time to waste. I need to get four more keys timed probably in order to hit the rating that I need. And in the last episode, it took 10 keys to finish four of them in time and get some rating. So let's get started. So we started the day off with a 22 Nultharis. We didn't time it because the healer accidentally pulled the Forge Master. This, as you can expect, went horribly. I panicked and used Bloodlust because I thought, okay, maybe we can kind of do this if we just kind of focus, but I think everyone was caught off guard by the fact that the boss abilities were going off. Nobody but the healer and I noticed that the boss was pulled. The healer noticed because he accidentally threw a judgment at him, and I noticed because I saw the judgment fly across my screen <laughs> towards the boss. A huge shame that that happened because honestly, I think we could have timed it if he just didn't have that extra pull. We were sitting at about 10 minutes when we died, so I feel like we had enough time to clear that boss, get the bit of trash that we needed, and then finish the last boss, especially with Bloodlust available for the Forge Master, but unfortunately, that didn't pan out. I got no rating for the untimed 22. We are starting a 21 Lotharian's Lair with people that want to plus two it. That would be really nice. With the group you see on the screen. I'm drop a movement speed totem for our guy here. Keep it moving nice and quick. We're going to relocate it over there if he wants to keep going past that. He's going for the big pull. Dropping a stone skin. Oh, he's going for it all the way. We're going to drop a stone skin totem and a wind fury totem. We're going to... Tar oh, I got knocked up right there. I wanted to do the tar and stun, but that's okay. We're going to drop a stun totem here. I can drop all our cooldowns here. It'll be worth it because it's a, such a huge group. I do have my Tauren stun available for when the wild shard chunks. He tries to do his little big, a little big AoE. His big AoE. It's big. There we go. We did a little stun. Make sure that it gets interrupted. Nobody has to move out of it. People can keep DPSing. Another pair of doggos coming through. Big guys going down. Pretty good pull so far. Everything's dying kind of uniformly, so we don't have to worry too much about things standing and sanguine. Perfect. Very good pull. 26% just from that one pull. Very nice to see a group that can do that kind of stuff. Uh, fills me with confidence. If I don't get carried too hard by DPS in the terms of DPS, I might try to stay with this group for another dungeon run. That would really, 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 that would be really, really good. You know, Bloodlust here on pull. One Fury Totem. I used my Sundering even though I probably shouldn't have because I didn't have Doom Winds up and Doom Winds was going to be up soon. We will have Doom Winds up here in a second. I have Wind Strikes coming through. I had just enough time between the Wind Strikes. I'm moving forward. I'm going to get knocked in this direction. I'm going to have to move in the crystal because I don't want to get hit by razor shards. I'm very scared of razor shards. Even the tank is scared of razor shards. Then I know I need to be scared of razor shards. Switching to the skitters. Or skitters. I don't know. I don't know what the heck to call them. But the little guys. We need to kill the adds. Otherwise the shatter will wipe us out. Another shatter coming through. We're trying to kill this thing. Okay. We managed to. I'm kind of stuck in the water. So I'm just going to throw earth shocks at it. Because I wasn't, I wasn't positioned very well, to be completely honest with you. Razor Shard's coming through. I'm nowhere near the front of it, so I don't have to worry. Dropping Doggos. Managed to do Sundering on a couple of these adds. Not doing too great on this fight so far, as far as positioning is concerned. I could do a lot better than that. I'm going to stand on top of the tank, because the next Razor Shards don't come through that quickly. And this way I'm able to keep DPSing the boss. I'm going to drop new Doggos. Razor Shards are coming through. That means the tank is going to want to move anyway. Standing on top of the tank. We have to kill this last skitter quickly. There's the shatter coming through. We're going to stand on top of the tank. So we get knocked in the same direction. That way I, I can keep DPSing because I stay in melee range. The reason it's safe to do this is because the... Whatchamacallit's the razor shards aren't coming through, through anytime soon. And I have enough time to get out of the thing. Get out of the crystal thing. Uh, razor shards coming through. I'm going to hold my cooldowns. We're going to burst this last one. With everything we've got, we should be able to kill it very, very quickly. Okay, that did go through. I'm going to use a group heal here just to be safe. I'm going to move forward. Not too worried about the healing either. Kind of let my DPS drop off there because I was focusing too much on what I was going to do and not just doing something in the meantime. Always be storm striking is my motto. The shatter's coming through. we got to finish those guys off. Stand on top of the boss. Razor Shards is coming through. We're going to use a defensive to move out of that. Otherwise, I'm dead. I didn't pay attention to when the next uh, Razor Shards was coming up. It was coming up right after the knockback, so we couldn't stand on top of the tank. 
We don't need to worry about the next chatter because the boss is about to die. So we're just going to drop everything we can onto the boss to make sure that he dies before we have to take care of the ads. Beautiful. That's it. We're done. I have a bit of an advantage here as far as Cleave is concerned because I'm actually able to hit the skitters with my chain lightning because it jumps 15 yards. The hitbox on that boss is really, really weird. It's kind of tiny, regardless of how huge he is, just to make life more miserable for us uh, melee, I guess. Not sure why. Giving people water walking. Trying to give myself water walking. There we go. That should keep us moving relatively quickly. Uh, we decided to pull this. That's okay. Not pulling. We are pulling. We aren't pulling the this guy. Avalanche coming through. I'm going to try to move to the side. I'm going to drop a stun totem on top of this, put a focus on this guy. We have the drummer starting to drum. Is he going to drum? He's not going to drum. He decided not to drum. He didn't feel like it today. Okay, we're going to wind fury totem. We're going to drop all of our cooldowns here because it's a nice big group. I'm going to move away now because I see a couple of these avalanches going through. We just want to make it easier for us. Melee to keep DPSing. I did do that in the middle of my cooldowns, but I feel like I'll be the group player if I do that because we do have four melee and it's kind of impossible to avoid this shit if you have four melee. Tank is incredibly aggressive. I very much like the way he's pulling. Avalanche is coming through. I'm going to put a focus on this. We're going to Tauren stun all the way over there. I don't know what I got hit by, but I'm going to self-heal to recover from it. I have a focus on the Nasher, so when he does cast this thing, we can interrupt it like this. I have a Sundering coming through that's going to stop these guys in their tracks for a little split second. Avalanche coming through. I got hit by that. I'm going to Health Potion here just so I don't die in the middle of this pull. That would be very, very bad. Okay, there's two of these breakers so we have to worry about two avalanches they're desynced by a few seconds so it's not too bad we have the red paladin or sorry no the holy paladin interrupting that thing that i had on focus trying to get out of this rogue got hit by the frontal it seems i got hit by the frontal because the tank is kind of moving in circles or maybe i am i'm not 100 percent sure dropping doggos when things are about to die that's like a dnv special Okay, luckily the Holy Paladin is ridiculous. We're shrouding past this. We have a sap on one of these guys. We're moving quickly. Very good. Are we shrouding past this as well? We are. Very good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, I very much enjoy this group. This is clearly a very experienced group. I'm happy to be part of it. I'm glad I got invited. <laughs> yes. I'm truly, genuinely not even used to being in this kind of group. Oh, I'm so dead. I'm going to reincarnate. I don't care. I don't want to make them spend a battle res on me. That would really suck. I wasn't paying attention to when the breaker was casting his thing. We're going to do a little interrupt here. I think people keep beating me to the interrupts. Currently on cooldown. Typhoon's going through. Somebody dropped theirs on me. That's unfortunate. What can I do? I can't do much about it. I'm trying to finish these guys off so they don't drop stuff on the Hulk. By stuff, I mean Sanguine Bulls. Piercing Shards coming through. We're going to drop a Stone Skin Totem just to help the tank survive. Not that he really needs it. He's been very, very beefy. The Breakers have this thing where they do the avalanche and then they just kind of stand there for a while. And sometimes it leaves them in sanguine and it's very annoying. I'm going to kick that guy. I'm going to put a focus on him so I can keep kicking him. I'm trying to kill the thing that's casting the Scorches because they really hurt, actually. We have a Pelter coming in. We're going to drop a stun on top of these guys. I'm going to kick this again. Right as the stun came through. Wish Grounding Totem was still a thing. For PvE, that would be amazing. Because when I see stuff getting cast at me, when I have no interrupt, I would have some recourse. Otherwise, I can just kind of sit there and hope it doesn't kill me. Or use a defensive, I guess. I could use that, too. I'm going to drop Doomwinds here. I don't care about the boss fight as much. Oh, that really hurts. I'm going to use a self-heal here. I'm going to try and make this guy jump. There we go. We actually switched intentionally to him instead of cleaving because I saw that the Ursul's Vortex was down so that they will get pulled back if they jump. So I tried to make it jump to make sure that it doesn't jump later. Raker's going down. He's going to drop one of these. We're going to move out of that. I can't move these guys. They're immune to knockbacks. Uh, this guy isn't, though. I'm going to knock him back like that. I thought that it was two breakers. My brain wasn't processing what I was seeing for a second there. You have this guy jumping down. I was in combat, so I didn't get knocked back. Okay, and we have them grouping over there. I'm going to stand over here, trying to stay at max range so that I can, so that we have more space. The rogue has extra distance. The rogue also moved away from this. If we're just spaced out right like this, we're actually pretty much golden. Tank knows how to group these up. That's beautiful. Five seconds until we have this. I'm just going to move away to stay safe. There we go. That's beautiful. It's nice to see people looking out for each other and making sure that we don't get murdered by the strike of the mountain. Another strike of the mountain in eight seconds. I have to look out for that. When it's going to get messy is when he goes under. I'm going to step away, make sure that I'm nice and safe. Strike of the Mountain coming through, and I'm just moving back to the boss now. When he goes under and comes back up, 
Uh, the issue is that we don't actually know when he's going to cast Strike of the Mountain. I just used all my cooldowns right as he went down, but I guess we'll kill these quickly and we can keep track of the thing in the center. I'm going to try and do that now. I, hope I already lost it, so I'm just gonna... I'm gonna look away and act stupid, and then my group can tell me which one to kill. <laughs> Dang it. How did I lose it? Okay, it's this one, apparently. I'm going to single target it with lightning bolts, of course. I don't want to use my doggos. When it gets low, I'm going to move away. I have wind strikes up, so I can do that. He might do Strike of the Mountain the first thing. Okay, he didn't. He did a Sunder. Don't know when Strike of the Mountain is coming through, but I'm going to step away like this. Th this is actually perfect. I only need to move a tiny little bit, and then I'm able to keep DPSing. Because the hands are actually extremely thin. So you can move just like one step like this, like I just did, and you will still be able to avoid all the damage they do. The Paladin is sacrificing for the group by standing really far away. I really appreciate that. He can't do his full damage, but he is a healer, so it doesn't matter as much. Rogue actually got targeted there. Dropping doggos, crash lightning, or chain lightning, crash lightning, not crash lightning, chain lightning. Not that it matters too much. Not getting very many procs, it feels like. Maybe I'm just not noticing them as much as I usually do. Getting a second intermission, I guess that's par for the course. This time I'm actually going to try and focus this one, that one, there. Moving back and forth, trying to lose me. You ain't going to lose me, I ain't going to lose you. It's this one, I believe. I think it's this one. People are kind of lost, but I think it's this one. I'm not going to use my sundering on it, but I will use doggos because doggos come up so often. I think it's this one. If it's not, I'm going to be very, very sad. Because my group was kind of just lost for a second. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm going to move away because Strike of the Mountain came through. Beautiful. Cause that's, what I'm, that's what I'm afraid of when he goes down, right? He will use his Strike of the Mountain when he comes back up right away. And I won't be in a position where I can safely, you know, deal with that. I'm just going to cleave. Uh, I'm not even going to cleave. I'm going to continue single targeting. Strike of the Mountain came down and wiped us out a little bit. Of all people, the Hunter died to it. <laughs> I guess he was moving when it came down. Okay. I'm going to try and off heal myself a little bit here. Very nice. Beautiful. We're going to drop a Wind Fury Totem or a Wind Rush Totem. Hunter will run into it. We're going to reposition it over here to extend our buff and also let the Hunter get to us. A little bit quicker by stepping into it and getting another buff for himself. Okay, we're going to Stone Skin Totem because these guys primarily do physical damage and they do a lot of it with their chomps. Dropping a slow totem here so the tank can kite if he needs to because I saw him get pretty low in a second. He is pulling that group. We're going to... This is an interesting pull. I have not seen this before. These are some very creative routes. Okay. I'm going to drop a stun, stun totem on top of these guys because there's a Pelter in it. We're going to focus the Pelter because I think we're going to get an Souls Vortex in there. Never mind, Pelter went all the way up there. Okay, well, uh, we're going to use a defensive here and a group heal. This is a hell of a pull, I gotta admit. We're looking at the Shaper to kick him like this, so he can keep sh moving. Worm's coming in from <laughs> out of nowhere. The Worm comes in, just enters frame. You have cooks available. I don't know how to get it. I'm okay, I'm going to make it my freaking mission to get up there with this guy. With my jump, and we're going to knock him down like that. There you go, buddy. Him. <laughs> I'm trying to not stand on top of the tank so the breaker doesn't kill me. Okay, now we can at least reach this guy. We're gonna kick him, hit like hit him with the sundering to interrupt one of his casts. Man, that was that was a weird pull. I've not seen that before. You like I've never really seen this group incorporated into a route intentionally. Usually people accidentally pull it. I guess we're gonna skip something down here. I'm not sure what with. Probably the shroud is gonna let us get past the first dominator. I'm assuming that's what's going to be done, but I can't tell you for sure. We're going to kick this, and we're going to put a focus on it. I'm trying to kill this thing that's dropping the Scorches. This is definitely unique. Like, it's different to what I've usually seen here. We have a stun on the Grub, so we don't have to worry about it transforming. Is there another Grub in the back? There isn't. We do have Sundering available for the next Grub. I'm going to hold Sundering just for the Grub. There's the Grub. I'm going to hit the Grub with Sundering. I don't care. I just really need it interrupted because I'm so terrified of those Grubs. I'm going to turn off friendly health bars that don't need to see where people are anymore. It's not that important. These Typhoons are very good and lets the tank keep kiting. I'm going to switch to the Lurker because he's higher HP. We do have Bloodlust available for this boss. I'm assuming we want it for this boss. There we go. And now we're ready for this boss fight. We're going to Bloodlust. I don't have Poison Cleanse Totem because I'm stupid. I'm very, very stupid and I didn't switch this. That's unfortunate. I do have my group heal available for the first one. I'm not going to use it because the healer has bloodlust so he can keep everyone up. I'm very annoyed at myself right now because I didn't switch talents even though I was thinking about switching talents just a second ago. 
Need to kill this guy. Need to help my group. I was too busy talking about being stupid to help my group actually kill the ads quick enough. But we, the boss didn't get a buff, so it's okay. I'm so getting carried through this group. <laughs> I'm the lowest DPS. I'm messing up and not having my talents, but you know, sometimes it's about letting yourself get carried. I don't, th I, like, even if the group wants me to join for another run, I will not because I feel like I'm getting carried. I feel like I need to contribute more if I'm to be allowed to stay in a group. Spike Tongue's coming through, Tank's getting away. I didn't use my group kill because I knew Sp Spike Tongue was coming through. That means that the healer has plenty of time to heal us up without anyone taking any damage because the boss is not doing anything other than channeling Spike Tongue. We do have a wretch coming up. Everyone's very healthy, so I don't think I need to use my group heal here either. I'm trying to use it as a band-aid, not as just like a by default thing that I use. He the rogue is getting low. For the next toxic wretch, I'm 100% using my group heal. There's a toxic wretch. I'm using the group heal to stop us off a little bit before we get started. That one needs to die. The pings are coming through. Okay, can we kill him? We can't kill him. That guy needs to die now. Okay, the boss didn't get buffed. All is well. I didn't switch again because I was tunneling on when I need to use my group heal. I have doom winds coming through. We have storm strike or wind strikes coming through. Spike tongue is going through again. We have another proc of wind strikes. It's beautiful to see. Very nice. Boss is basically almost dead. I have my defensive available for the next Toxic Wretch. But we're all actually very healthy, so I don't know if I need to use the... the... I'm going to just use it. Screw it. Because I don't think the boss is going to live for another Toxic Wretch. We'll see. I have a Sundering coming through. That means more Storm Strike procs. Never mind, it doesn't because I didn't get a Storm Strike proc. I'm a little bit flustered in this run, but so far so good. There's another Toxic Wretch, but the boss should be dead here. The poison is actually still ticking, so I'm just going to keep healing so I don't die while I'm jumping down. There we go. 14 minutes left on this fight, or on this dungeon. The hunter is blasting the DPS. We're going to use Shroud here. Very nice. Another sap. Moving through the middle. Trying to figure out which way we want to go. Another sap coming through. Four seconds. Pala got left behind. Pala should just die. Die close to us. Okay, so the Paladin didn't see the Shroud and whatnot, but we were able to res him. We just let him die near us. Okay, that worked out. That Shroud tech was really, really nice, actually. Holy crap. I feel like that's a big contributor to us timing this so quickly. It should be more than good enough with percent. We'll have 99% after this Dominator, and I think we might try to reset the this group with a Rogue Stealth. Uh, this Paladin doesn't understand the tactic. Uh, that's a reset. That's a fast reset. We are not releasing. All right, we're trying to reset the thing again. Paladin is swearing at people. We're doing the reset. It was successful. Hunter is running over quickly. We have this right here, so the tank can instantly stun it by positioning correctly. That's beautiful. We're going to cleave this because I don't think I need to actually hit it in order to kill it quickly enough. I'm going to switch to it just here near the end just to make sure it happens. There we go. We continue hitting the boss. We're going to switch to lightning bolts while we have the wind strike procs because I was using chain lightning. That's inefficient. I don't know if it's worth using a global during wind strikes, but it was something I wanted to do. This is basically smooth sailing until the intermission. My crystal spike. This one is on the tank. Well, we broke this one, but the landslide came through at the right time. That was a little bit scary now that I look at it. It's not exactly smooth sailing. Luckily, the second one is perfectly fine. We should be able to keep DPSing from here. Yes, we are. It's beautiful. I got knocked, about, uh, knocked up by a volcanic. It's my one reminder that this is going to be a thing. We have crystal spikes coming through. Somebody's dropping pings to let us know where to drop the crystal spike. Molten crash coming through. After this, the magma sculpture comes up, which gets instantly stunned. We're going to hard switch to the magma structure this time because we don't have uh, as much DPS because not everyone is in their cooldowns. We're stack stacking on top of it so that we get another stun on it if necessary. Yes, we did get another stun. We will get a third crystal, so this is fine. We are safe. We just need to make sure that the crystal doesn't get bro broken by landslide. That's all we need to do. There's another crystal spike. It's nearby. I'm a little bit hesitant to trust it. Tank did decide to move the boss just a little bit to make sure we don't die to the magma wave or that the landslide doesn't break it in case it gets cast. I always get lost about what's coming when. There's a landslide coming through right now. we got to make sure we don't stand in front of the boss. We're going to stand in front of his left arm. Landslide's coming through. We're going to move just a little bit. Okay, now here's the crystal spike. It didn't go on me. Tank should be able to move this, like turn this around to make the ad instantly get stunned. He's not trusting the boss to... It does actually look like he's going to use a landslide before he does Magma Sculpture. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Magma Sculpture is coming through. It is not targeting me, so I can start DPSing it right away. We're going to 
use our group heal here because the ad is moving. The ad moving is actually one a big part of what makes us take damage in this boss fight. That's what you usually die to. We had double stun going up on that. We have a third crystal coming through, which will keep us safe from, from the next magma wave. I don't know if we need it. There's a crystal spike. It's very far away. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about this one, Chief. I'm going to be honest. I really don't know about ch this one, Chief. Uh, <laughs> Hunter went to pull this so that we can do this during the boss fight. Well, the good thing is that we have enough time to time it. I'm waiting here because the, uh, whatchamacallit, the druid moves fast enough to actually res us. So what happened there is the rogue, the or not, sorry, not the rogue, the hunter decided to pull the trapper and dominator while we were still fighting Dark Rule. While Dark Rule was going to move a long ass distance because the hunter was really far away because he was trying to pull these guys while we were still fighting Dark Rule. So the crystal was far away. Dark Rule had to move to the crystal. These guys had to move to here. They do AoE damage, both the Dominator and the Trapper. And there was a frontal cleave. A bunch of people died. Oh, we're gonna do it again, I guess. I'm gonna Bloodlust. I think we're able to keep meleeing through this wall. We're not. That's unfortunate. I'll just drop some shocks over. Okay, we managed to drop this. Landslide's coming through, but it will not affect uh, the, la the crystals because they haven't been formed yet. These are coming through. I'm going to hard switch to the char skin because we don't have bloodlust this time around to kill it quickly. We have a crystal coming up, but it's going to actually remain there because we didn't, uh, we killed the char skin quickly enough. I'm dropping doom winds, trying to get as many main hand weapon attacks as I can. Landslide broke a crystal, but we have another crystal coming through. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to step a little bit away. There's a crystal spike. We really need to move the boss now so this landslide doesn't break it, but there isn't one coming through, so it's not a big deal. Magma waves coming through. We won't be able to melee DPS, but I'm okay with that. At this point, I just want to finish the dungeon. We should be able to kill the boss pretty quickly here. Just dropping some off heals on the paladin, standing in front of the boss's off hand or his left hand. Now that we drop the crystal there, perfect. This is going to lead to us being able to stun the ad. We should be able to kill this boss before he does another intermission magma wave. Because this one we had bloodlust available for the first part of the boss fight. There's the sculpture, it got instantly stunned. We're going to hard switch to it. I don't want to risk anything here. No reason to risk anything. We're we're almost done with the boss fight, so there's no reason to risk. We have another stun coming through for the char skin. I can now switch to the boss. Okay, there isn't another stun. I'm going to have to move over this way because if it's targeting me, which it isn't, luckily, we have to kite it. And there's the landslide. The boss should be dead. Now let's see what stupid mob we pull. We're going to pull the trapper. Apparently, that's the best choice. Just pull the thing that's going to kill someone. Very nice. I don't know where we're going for that and not for the two breakers, I guess, because we have to walk less. We're going to kick this. We're going to drop a stun totem on top of it and we're going to use a defensive. All of our damage should be focused on this because that way we can actually just kill it and get the percent we need. This was stupid. This could have been a plus two key, I think, but they just had to do their crazy, stupid strats. I'm going to leave the group because there were a lot of very toxic people in it because of the mistakes being made, which I understand. Like when, when stupid things like that happen, it really ruins the mood in the group. So after that Neltharian's Lair 21 fiasco, I went ahead and tried to do a 21 Uldaman. That was a stupid idea. I faced the same issues that we always faced. The tank wasn't positioning on top of the one single caster that exists in the Bromac boss fight. What also didn't help, I think the group was a little demoralized because we kind of almost wiped on the trash because the tank kept dying to it. I think he was just disrespecting the chomps from the basilisks. I'm not 100% sure. I also honestly don't really know what other than the tank's positioning was making the boss fight difficult, but we wiped on on it and people started leaving because they knew they couldn't time the key so we moved on starting a bracket on a bracket height of vortex pinnacle 21 with the group you see on the screen drop one of these speedy totems put a focus on this thing interrupt it make a group up with the rest of them wind fear totem stone skin totem and we're gonna get started with all our cooldowns here i'm gonna tunnel all of my dps into this big guy because he's gonna take the longest to kill may as well get, get started with it huh keep interrupting this thing and being beaten to it other people are interrupting it that's good to see whenever i see people interrupting things that aren't like super super high prio like just a regular ass wind bolt i get very happy because it means they're ready to use their interrupts pretty much on anything and we got to deal with the bullshit that are these cloud guard guys they can be so annoying sometimes i'm going to try and finish off this gust soldier before he does even more damage and there's no chance he survives for another one of these casts actually so i'm just going to start cleaving again looking at the armored mistral these guys really need to move that one's going to get healed to full but it's okay the one that's low is the one that we can't let heal that's the big thing i wasn't really thinking about it so i didn't think about knocking back the gust soldier 
when he was getting low. That's my bad, completely. Trying to kill this guy before he reaches the rest of them. Okay. Tank is manipulating it so that he doesn't drop the pool underneath these guys. I like that. Tank's doing quite well. Dropping a new Wind Fury totem. We have movement speed coming from the Druid. I appreciate that. Not sure if we're planning on going into the next group. We're going to hold our Sundering until we have Doom Winds up. Doggos, Doom Winds into stun Sundering. I hope I hit both of them. I don't think I did. Trying to get as many hits in as I can on this guy. He should die here. That's very good. Final, final Armored Mistral is being killed now. We're going to pull that into this group. We're going to put a focus on that one guy in the back so we can interrupt the Cyclone if necessary. I'm not going to bother with the Wind Bolts just yet. I interrupted something. I got Cyclone because nobody interrupted that one. That's unfortunate. I don't know if we had everything on cooldown or not. Another Cyclone's going through. I'm trying to kill this guy so he doesn't drop anything. I'm going to kick this just so everything keeps grouping up. So we can actually cleave it. I'm not sure what we're kiting now. We're going to drop a Sundering here through the middle. Try and get some Chain Lightnings in so I can do a Crash Lightning. So I can do a Chain Lightning. So I can do another Crash Lightning. So on and so forth. We're going to kick that Cyclone. Beautiful. So far, very good with the uh, Sanguine. Tank's doing a great job. Probably not that new to Demon Hunter, or at least not new to Tank. And we're going to drop a Stun Totem. Hopefully it takes out one of these. It didn't. That's unfortunate. I have aggro, but the Tank managed to regain it quickly. I'm going to hold my group heal cooldown until I have to do it on the next uh, pull. The next pull is very, very dangerous, so I like to save my group heal for that. I'm going to kick this Wind Bolt, and we're going to try and heal this group off. I'll drop Doggos for this group, and then I'll have my Doom Wind Sundering for the next group, which I consider to be... Pretty dangerous. This is a bloodlust candidate for when you're doing fortified for sure. And drop a stun totem. Gonna kick this guy, make everything group up, make everything move that needs to move. Wind Fury totem, stone skin totem. This thing is casting the shield, so we're gonna start try and up, drop all our cooldowns now. We're gonna drop a group heal so the healer doesn't have to worry about that. We're going to kick one of these cyclones, move back to the mistral. That guy's casting, I can't interrupt them. There we go, we got the interrupt. That should make a move out of the pool. Looking to see when things get low, like right about now, I'm going to just knock them all back. We're going to try and kill them so that they're not standing on top of this. I feel like that was a good uh, knockback. I sacrificed some DPS to be able to focus on that. Like I didn't want to use my global so I can use my global on uh, the thunderstorm so that I can knock it back and make sure that it doesn't drop any pools underneath the guy we cannot move with the long ass uninterruptible cast. There's a turbulence coming through. We're going to use a defensive on the turbulence. I'll have it back up from for the boss fight for the intermissions. Going to try and click this. No, I can't kick it, but I'll use the tar and stun to interrupt it then. Going to kick whatever it is cast next. It's a wind bolt. Going to kick this again just to make it get out of the thing. It's getting kicked again. Good. It's dead. What we were focusing on there is the making to make sure like we were trying to uh, kill it before it reaches the cloud prince in order to prevent us from uh, dropping a sanguine pool underneath the cloud prince because the cloud prince can do the turbulence and then he's standing still he can't be moved it's a pain in the ass i have a group heal coming up soon but i don't think i need it for this i would rather save it for the first intermission i also have doomans available i kind of don't want to use it on this either is we're going to bloodlust the first boss, from what I can see. Unless we're going to hold it all the way to the second boss, which I think is not the call. So we're probably going to bloodlust the first boss. Getting knocked up by a volcanic. It's funny to get knocked by uh, knocked up by that. It happens like once or twice in a dungeon. Usually it's completely like irrelevant that you get knocked up by it. There we go. Just going to keep an eye on the lurking tempest back there. We're going to jump to the right here. Hopefully that doesn't body pull the boss. I don't think I did. And drop Wind Fury Totem, Stone Skin Totem. We're going to try and help the healer out by healing the hunter. We're going to drop Bloodlust. It's already been dropped by the hunter. I'm using Doggos in the middle of my Doom Winds. That's not the right move. Okay, I think we did okay. I'm going to kick now. I focus on my opener because I get a lot of burst down in the, on the opener. These Lightning Bolts really hurt. It would help if the group tried to use some sort of interrupt, you know? Because it looked like I was the only one that actually kicked the boss so far. I have my group heal going for this intermission period because it does a lot of damage. Even on fortified, it does a lot of damage. So you can imagine it's very painful during the radical. I'm going to step over here so that we make sure that we're standing in such a way that we can see the guys in the back because those will actually cast their chain lightning thing at you if you don't look at them. Looking at them makes them hide. If they're hiding, they're not casting. If they're not casting, you're safe. I'm going to kick this because I can see that it's targeting me. You don't really need to kick if it's uh, targeting the boss. Or, sorry, targeting the tank. I keep calling tanks bosses. I don't know why that is the case, but I do. I'm going to use my defensive here because I'm split off from the group. With the druid, it shouldn't matter too much. I'm going to drop a heal on our 
Evoker because he got kind of low. I thought I had Maelstrom, but I didn't. We're going to drop Doggos and keep DPSing. Then interrupt again. I just dropped my Sundering, Sundering right before my Doom Winds came up off of cooldown. That was a mistake. You're going to kick that because it's targeting me. I waited for it to cast all the way through so that I would get the least amount of time with the boss doing anything else. Because if he's casting, he's not doing anything else. I'm going to use a healing potion here just to make sure I stay nice and healthy. We need a new Wind Fury totem because it's been two minutes. I just overlapped my kick with the Demon Hunter, but it's nice to see that the Demon Hunter is interrupting. I'm wasting Maelstrom. I made the poor, I made a poor decision there. We're going to use a Sundering. Okay, we're back up with Maelstrom. Trying to use Maelstrom to reset my Storm Strike. Okay. Very nice, actually. Very, very nice. So far, no deaths in the group. Looking like a really, really good group. I don't feel like I'm being carried. Okay, we're waiting for a mana break. Gonna drop some totems down to help us survive. There is the stun from the Demon Hunter. I'm going to... Hmm, should I hold for Doomwinds? I'm not gonna hold for Doomwinds. I'm gonna use Sundering here. We'll use Doomwinds on the boss. We're gonna... Car and stun all of these. They're being... Uh, we're gonna just knock them back to group them up on top of this thing. I don't want that to pull them back into the center. And by that, I mean the um, Ursal's Vortex. I'm getting, getting a little bit flustered here because reasons. I'm going to drop a Stun Totem on top of them. That's going to overlap a little bit with the Binding Shot, unfortunately. Probably should have used Doomwinds looking at it now, but that's... An, I don't know. They were dying very quickly early on. I guess there were just a lot of cooldowns coming through to hit them. I could have added mine to it. We probably could have just exploded them. We're waiting for a Mana Break. I don't know if we want to skip these, go around like the lip here maybe the tank wants to do that i'm just going to position in case that's the case yeah we're laughing because uh, the druid kept saying mb mb which is uh, like i first took it as uh, mana break but it or sorry as uh, my bad but the druid meant mana break <laughs> that's funny i think that's really funny <laughs> druid says i'm not that bad <laughs> all right we're getting ready to jump into the boss fight or the boss well basically it's a freaking boss fight I am going to drop everything for this. I have to purge this one guy. Actually, no, I don't need to. I'm going to use a group heal here because this dot is actually ridiculous. I'm going to step out of the pool. I don't want to risk getting hit by that. Dropping doggos. Okay, tank is stand. Okay, okay, okay. We got it out of it quickly. That's good. The idea, by the way, with the... Um, what's it called? There we go. That's perfect. The idea with the circle is you stand at the edges of the circle from where the dragon is. Because that way, oh no, tank's pulling them extra. That's, uh, hopefully, okay, we killed it, we killed it, so it's not a big deal. Um, so the idea with the circle is you're going to stand at the edges, edges of the circle. That way, if you get targeted by the breath, you can actually move to the other side of the circle and you still have room to stay inside the circle while the breath is going through. If you stand in the middle of the circle, it's going to take up too much room with the breath, and you're going to have to leave the circle. If you leave the circle, you become vulnerable to dying. Looking at the Gust Soldier, I dropped my stun totem a little bit too early to try and prevent him. I'm going to try and prevent him with my Taran stun in a second here, like so. There we go. That actually saves us a bunch of damage. I'm going to use my Sundering to Crash Lightning Chain Lightning combos. Cyclones are going through. I'm going to knock them just to prevent the Cyclones, also to prevent that from dropping underneath. We're going to remove this shield. I'm going to kick that. Okay, we got more knockbacks going through. That's good. We're going to kick that, make them all group up. Maybe the kick wasn't necessary. It was only casting Wind Bolts, but we were preventing Sanguine from dropping underneath these guys. I just used dogs, like just reflex use dogs because I saw that they were shining. That's something I need to work on because I keep using doggos right when I don't need to use doggos. Tank is pulling the assassins. Very good. I'm going to drop a stun totem on top of them. Didn't catch all of them. We're going to drop a stone skin totem because when they do their thing, they're actually doing physical damage. I'm going to get to purging. I don't have a kick available. If it doesn't get kicked, we're going to purge it as well. Never mind, there's a silence rune going down. Uh, I'm going to drop my doom ones here so I can use it again on the boss when we pull. This is where I should use doggos. Looking at which one's going to cast first. They're all going to kind of cast at the same time. I'm going to kick this one, keep them all moving. This one's going to have to get kicked soon. He's very slow. Got kicked by the hunter. Very good. The stank is extremely good about their positioning. They're able to make the mobs move towards them in such a way that they avoid sanguine. That's very, very nice. That's the mark of a skilled tank. I'm going to drop a stun totem on top of everything. That should prevent some of these casts going through. We got both of the defensives that the assassins use. And we're looking for these. We're going to purge these because there's only four targets to purge. We're going to purge that one as well. That one purge global does more damage than me actually doing a bunch of damage. There we go. It is very mana intensive, even for when you're a DPS. 
We're kind of moving in a risky direction here. Don't really like where we're going. These knockbacks aren't ideal. I'm going to knock them back that way. Uh, using a... <laughs> what's it called? Ursaw's Vortex is actually pretty risky on Sanguine Week because you're going to drag them back into Sanguine. That's kind of what happened here, but that's okay. I think we're doing pretty much fine on time. We've got 15 minutes. We're near the second boss. We're about to start a second boss, and I feel like that's plenty of time. Healer's already up here, drinking it up, banging out shots so he can heal us better. I can respect that. Tank is not positioning ideally here. Uh, ideally, you keep it right in the middle. Tank is trying to reposition. We're going to get into position to get the haste buff. And then we're going to beat the crap out of the boss as much as we possibly can. First knock up is coming through. We're going to stand over here. We're going to get knocked up. I'm not going to use anything for this because the healer has all of his cooldowns available most likely. Because we didn't really probably need to use any for the next group. Or sorry, for the previous group. For the next knock up, I'm going to use the group heal. I need to reposition again to this side. I'm trying to position in such a way that if the wind direction changes and comes from upstairs, I can actually just stay put. That is not what happened. We have another knockup coming through. We're going to reapply totems. Our tank just got knocked up when he didn't need to, so he might be in a bit of a trouble here from that silence. I think he can jump over it using his uh, jumpy jump. We are downwind. Tank needs some more loving. We're going to stand here and heal the tank. I think it was because he was silenced and still taking a bunch of damage. I'm not sure, though. I can't tell. What, demons, what demon hunters can do is they can actually jump over it themselves. They don't need to get knocked up. Because warriors can also do that with heroic leap. You know, we have another doom winds coming in here in a second. For this knockup, I'm actually going to use a defensive and walk into this jump. I didn't get silenced. That's all that matters. We're going to try and reposition, and then we can drop doom winds and all of our cooldowns. There we go. We need to use doggos, unfortunately. I didn't use it on time. I used it during the rotation. I shouldn't have, or either during doom winds, not before it. If my commentary is a little bit jumbly today i don't know what jumbly means but like rambly or weird or inaccurate that is because i'm just trying to really do well on these fights because these are becoming keys that are kind of hard to time if you mess around and when i'm commentating i feel like i'm sort of just messing around and not giving it my full focus right now i'm trying to do so boss is almost dead that's really good i'm not even going to bother using my doggo's on the boss because he's just going to die in a second here beautiful 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 execution Still zero deaths. Is this is a deathless 21 Vortex Pinnacle? I'm going to be real, real happy. Survival Hunter is absolutely shredding me in the DPS department, though. That's a little bit disappointing, but what can I do? I'm just not that good at DPSing, apparently. We have a focus on the Executor of the Caliph. I'm trying to kill this caster first. We're going to use a Stone Skin Totem because the Crashing Stomp is actually a physical damage ability. We're kicking the Rally. The Rally, what it does is it gives the Caliph 50% of his current HP. So you want to prevent that going through every time you can. Clean a little kill i'm gonna drop a wind rush totem here at the base that's gonna give everyone extra movement speed we're gonna relocate it somewhere about here should be when we run out of the buff so that everyone can get the buff again keep us moving nice and quick druid just kind of ran ahead even though he could have given us uh anything with the stuffy stuff i think he's just trying to drink which is also fair he hasn't had much time with mb mb All right holy smite is being cast i don't care about interrupting that right now we're gonna drop a stun totem lightning lash is coming through it's not on me luckily Tank could be positioning closer to this, but it's actually really hard to position these groups uh, for Sanguine, so I understand. We managed to interrupt that heal. We're trying to keep these guys away from the Minister of Air. I am going to use a knockback on them when they get low. Right about now is when I should use the knockback. There we go. The Minister of Air is... Oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I could not have done it better, I think. That was beautiful. That made me happy on the inside. We cannot skip this because we can't. Okay, okay. People were kind of moving to the side as if they were going to skip. You cannot skip this, unfortunately. When you skip the dragon, I should say, you cannot skip anything else in the dungeon. So if you're skipping dragon, you may as well just face the fact that you're going to be <laughs> killing everything else in the dungeon, including these stars, which are extremely slow. You don't have to kill all of the stars. What you can do is you can kill a certain number of them. I don't know the exact number. I've seen it done. You should kill this so you don't have to take damage from it. But yeah, you can kill a certain number of stars and then just leave the rest here. They kind of just reset in the background, so you don't have to kill all of them. You can save some time that way. But for the most part, you want to just interrupt or you want to just... Uh, Kill all of them when you pull with a group like this. Not risk it unless you know the exact number you need to kill. You have a silence rune coming through. That's awesome. We can kick this rally. That's what's important. We're going to drop a stone skin totem. It should last for the next time this uh, 
stomp is used. Crashing stomp is coming through. He's going to give some this guy some healing. That's unfortunate. I should have knocked that and knocked back the priest when they got low. Or the adepts, I guess. I call them priests because they're using Holy Smite. We're going to look for a knockback here again. Okay, actually, the executor of the Calip is going to die first. So that knockback was kind of useless. But oh well, what can I do? Putting a focus on the one with circle and targeting the one with star. I'm going to drop a wind free totem. I'm going to drop a stone skin totem. Managed to mitigate some of that damage. I'm going to use a group heal here just to make sure everyone's nice and healthy because I see that some people are at low health. I'm going to kick this one that's star. Hopefully somebody gets the one that's on circle. We unfortunately didn't. That means I'm actually going to put focus on star and target this one that's circle. The reason I'm doing that is because one of them is going to be higher HP. And the one that's higher HP, if you can only interrupt one, you should interrupt the, the one that's higher HP. Because like I said, it gives him 50% of his current HP. So if his current HP is lower, what you can do is just focus him. Crashing Stomp coming through. I do have... Okay, we're going to interrupt that, that other one. Hopefully somebody gets this one. Nice. The tank actually got this one. Looking at the health bars, making sure that I knock them back when they start getting low so the Minister of Error doesn't get healed. I'm going to knock them back now. Ooh, that's going to leave a pool under the Minister of Air because the Executor was also casting uninterruptible, uninterruptible casts. That's unfortunate. The Minister of Air is going to get healed, healed quite a bit, but this is something very, very common. I just walked through this while it was AoE damaging, and I'm just stupid. I wasn't paying attention to that. I'm going to use Doggos and Sundering, but I'm not going to use Doom Winds because I don't think I'll have it back up for the boss if I use it here, and it's tyrannical, so I want it for the boss more than I want it for this. We have a wind strike proc coming through, so that means we can kill this a little bit quicker. There we go. He's almost dead. It's not a huge time loss, but if it could have been prevented, it would have been much nicer. What can you do? Now we are going to do the patented doggy hop. Doggy, doggy, doggy hop. Doggy hop. Doggy, doggy, doggy hop. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Truly beautiful. A masterpiece. I love killing these just because they're so grouped up. Oh, and I get a wind strike proc, so I just get a bunch of chain lightning. Look at that. Look at that. A tr another true masterpiece. Beautiful. I just wish Ascendance actually lasted for longer when you get it from deeply rooted elements. We're waiting for another uh, My Bad from the Druid. We're going to use Bloodlust right off the bat. I, again, don't have Wind Fury Totem down. We're going to use Sundering during Doom Winds. Make sure that that's the case. I'm trying to get main hand weapon strikes in. So we're using everything that's a main hand weapon strike rather than using resets with lightning bolts. We're going to switch to this, which means we're going to switch to chain lightning. Boss is going to do his thing that makes us jump. We need to jump. Okay, we managed to... I think everyone jumped, actually. That's really nice. He's putting the circle in Narnia. I do have my jump available, so I'm going to jump at two seconds. That's right about now. Flame shock him, frost shock him. When he comes back, we're going to drop doggos. We need a new wind fury totem, so we're going to just use that. We have a Sundering available. We'll use it right off the bat. Chain Lightning coming through after that little intermission area or time period, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be dropping, dropping an orb. It's nearby. That's beautiful. It means I can start DPSing right off the bat. We're going to drop Doggos. Chain Lightning. Tanks should be moving to the Skyfall Nova just so we can cleave. It would be a lot better if we could cleave. Chain Lightning is on me. I'm going to use a defensive here to just keep myself alive. Spore Cloak also helps. For the next, for the next ad, I'm going to use my group heal. Next ad should be coming down any second now. There it is. It's right on top of this. We're going to use the group heal just to make sure everyone's nice and healthy for it. Uh, yeah, it's on me even. I'm going to reincarnate. Probably a bad call to reincarnate. Self-healing and we're going to use a healing potion. Static clink's coming through. i got to make sure I jump. If I don't jump, I'm dead. I'm going to use my Maelstrom weapon to keep myself healed up. Not sure what's happening. Tank is kind of just standing there fighting the boss, never moving it for the ad. Okay, at least the tank is moving for this. He's been doing great the entire dungeon. Now he's just kind of... I, I don't know. I guess the zero deaths is not, not happening. The hunter was like, no, we had zero deaths. Yeah, I know, bud. I just... I can't survive that if I'm not getting topped off. Oh, the ad is all the way in the distance. Tank, move. Please move. I... What the fuck is happening? Can I get a battle res, please? Tank refuses to group up the ad with the boss, which is really annoying. I, I tried to type out for the, the tank to group it up. I need to use some Maelstrom weapon. I failed my static ling again. I'm gonna jump over. Oof, I almost stood outside anyway. Oh, jeez. Why is this so hard? I don't know. I guess it is a brutal fight. Like, the AoE from the orb is ridiculous, and then getting targeted by Chain Lightning twice is not exactly my forte because I don't have that much survivability. I only have the one defensive, even though it lasts for a long time. It doesn't last that long. Tanks should be moving. Okay, this time he is moving. That's beautiful. I t is the tank, like... What is going on? Why is the tank not moving? I don't understand. Please get away from me with that f***ing Chain Lightning. You're gonna kill me, buddy. 
Sweet Jesus. This is horrifying. Why is this so hard? Like, I'm flustered because we're taking a lot of damage. I feel like I'm not getting healed up enough. And then on top of that, the tank is just refusing to move when the Skyfall Nova comes down. So it's just weird. I don't know. I'm going to move over. I don't trust that we're going to kill it before he finishes drawing that. There we go. We're good to go. Boss is dead. That was, like, the end of this was actually really, really sketchy. Really, really sketchy. But we got our 9 rating. That's all we can really ask for. We are now at 2,774. No, no, we're not. We're at 2,783. This just hasn't updated yet. If I look at Mythic Plus, this is what it says. So we need another 17 rating. So two more key upgrades and we should be good. What we can upgrade is Halls of Infusion, Neltharis, and Brackenhide. Uldaman. We can also upgrade these to 22s, but it has to be either Neltharion's Lair or Freehold. What do I even have? I have a Freehold 19. See you guys around. We go for another adventure. I don't feel comfortable staying in the group because the Survival Hunter out DPS'd me big time. And also the tank just kind of really disappointed me in the end there. They were doing really, really, really well the entire run. And then at the end, they were just doing weird stuff where they didn't want to group up the boss and the ad. That could have given us a bunch more DPS because then we could cleave them. And it could also make it a little bit easier for the healer to heal if you can drop the effervescence underneath us maybe i don't know how big of an impact that would have made but i feel like grouping up there would have been the right call anyway onwards to new victories after that slightly confusing vp we ended up doing a brackenhide hollow 22 and i say doing what i mean to say is tried to do because we failed miserably it was going okay until the first boss on the first boss it really showed that the healer didn't have the experience necessary to really heal through this and i don't say that to be mean i genuinely mean they're a little bit inexperienced because the highest clear they have is an 18 and i don't think it was a brackenhide hollow i think it was some other dungeon so their highest dungeon done was an 18 and jumping from an 18 to a 22 as a healer is pretty rough especially on a healer intensive boss like Brackenhide Hollow first boss, the three musketeers or whatever you want to call them. If you don't manage to top everyone off quickly enough once the bleeds come through, you will very quickly end up with a wiped group because that bleed is brutal. And on this boss fight, the first bleeds when they came through, I don't know if it was a lack of defensives or if the healer just wasn't ready for it, but we weren't able to top everyone off even with my ancestral guidance going through and me pumping into three targets. Another issue was a lack of interrupts. The mage had zero interrupts by the end of the dungeon, or rather I should say by the end of the attempt of the run. So the first first full set of trash and the first boss fight where you spam your interrupts, the mage had zero. The paladin didn't have many either, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because those earth bolts from Trick Totem actually hurt a lot and they target random players. So if somebody is low from the bleed and Trick Totem pelts a f***ing rock at their head, they're kinda dead. The final thing that didn't help was a lack of defensives. The mage could have ice blocked when they were marked for death, ideally the paladin would have bubbled one when it was on them and then used the bop to help someone else who got marked. This did not happen so we wiped. I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't trust this group to time the dungeon, so I just left. I was the first one to leave, which is probably a dick move, but also I just don't want to waste my time looking at a group struggle through a dungeon just to get zero rating for doing an untimed key. I respect my time enough to know that I don't need to waste it like that. I'm getting started with a 21 Eltharis, so let's see how this goes. Tank wants to do the tactic where we grab the two wardens and then run directly into hunters we're going to drop a stone skin totem so that when the hunters do their little thing we are protected from 10 percent of the damage going to relocate the totem give more movement speed again we got lahar in the group we're going to put focus on lahar so we can interrupt them when necessary we're going to step closer to lahar to make him cast maybe we're going to kick him keep him moving and drop a stun totem right here prevent some binding spears and maybe some damage are we good we're going to stun everything again Ooh, I'm gonna wait until that goes away. I'm scared. We're gonna use the chain now to stun everything. There's some sanguine going through. Somebody hasn't used the chain. Priest is using chain, dragging himself through sanguine. Oh, the priest is the healer, so I understand. We're gonna drop all our DPS now because we need to do a bunch of damage through sanguine. Okay, not not so bad. We lost the priest and we lost a bit of time. Could have been a lot worse. I'm gonna kick this, keep it moving. Not bad. We had a lot of damage coming through from the druid during the fight. I was literally just holding because what you can do there is just kill everything with the chains and then just beat the shit out of Lahar for a bit. I completely ignored the DPS. I didn't want to hit anything because, again, the chains do the damage. I'm a lot more worried about pulling aggro than I am about doing the damage I can do during chains because the tank isn't hitting them as much as he could usually dragging the group in this direction so we got to be careful not to rip aggro 
while the gr tank is grouping for chains. Doing a lot of dragging around. I'm going to drop a slow totem. Maybe the tank just tries to kite for like defensiveness. There's just a spine crusher left. We're going to go move on to the next group. We're going to purge those shields off. We're going to kick this. I'm going to put a focus on him. I don't want to use my stunt totem on this. I don't feel like I need to. I'd rather use it on big group. There we go. Organic managed to kick that. I'm holding still. I'm holding my CC still for the next group as well as my whatchamacallits. Okay, first purge these. Tank managed to kick that. Okay, stun totem should be good here. That looked pretty good. We're gonna drop our doom winds here as well. I'm gonna use my Taran stun to stun everything. Fear also came through. Bit of an overlap of CC, but that tends to happen in pugs. It's no big deal. You don't have the communication necessary for it. Knockbacks are coming in to deal with the Sanguine. That's beautiful. I do also have knockbacks if necessary. They don't seem to be right now. I'm just going to hold it and switch over to this one. That's the highest HP. Lots of Sanguine healing and 21Ks. I'm trying to finish these off before they reach the group because we've had the issue of Sanguine healing coming through the second we start a pull. We're going to drop a Stunt Totem. That might take care of that channel that the thaumaturge is doing we're looking at the thaumaturge for the next interrupt there we go there it is we can kick it we should have doom winds available for the start of the boss fight that is when we will be bloodlusting so we want to make sure that we have doom winds available for the, the bloodlust we don't need it right at the start the bloodlust lasts for 30 some seconds so it's not a huge deal we will use sundering here though just because it's a big group and i get more value out of aoe sunder than i do single target sunder there we go we can get started with the boss we're going to bloodlust right off the bat we'll have doom winds up in a second i'm going to drop doggos and i'm going to drop doom winds after doggos trying to get main hand weapon strikes in during doom winds as many as I possibly can. I didn't have Sundering, but that's okay. Trying to also position so we bait the charge correctly. Organic was positioning correctly. I just realized Organic is a Feral Druid, not a Balanced Druid. I'm just so used to seeing uh, DPS Druids be Balanced, not Feral. Which I don't understand why. Feral does really, really well. It's not bad at all. I'm going to use the group kill here for this AoE dot that just got applied to us. This is probably... The first one is probably the best one to use it on. Because otherwise, the rest of the time he does the AoE dot and then he does the charge. Looking to position correctly for these. Seeing where the tank is. There we go. I'm going to step as far away as I can from the boss. While still being able to hit him. That way if the little circle drops on top of me. Okay, while it's on mutations up. And the dome is over here. So I'm going to try and stand in the dome. So I can get some protection from it. Charge is on me. That's still okay. It's not a long distance. We got to make sure we don't get hit by the lava waves. I'm going to jump over there. Again, try to stand as far away from the boss. While still being able to hit him because of this stuff. I think that might have dropped on me while I was moving around. I'm not sure. We have new doggos available. Bosses at 20% HP. That's pretty good. We're actually making good time. Feral Druid's blasting the DPS. Volatile Mutation's coming through. I'm going to use my defensive here. I'm baiting to a very nearby wall. That's probably not the safest thing I could have done. I kind of don't want to... Ooh, okay. I'm glad it went to the distant wall because I wasn't paying attention, to be honest. I'm going to drop doggos and a sundering just to kill this because we're going to be grouping mobs up for a little while here after this. We should be getting levitate. Levitate. I would love to get a levitate. Thank you. That way we don't have to run around. We can just jump. Druid can go boomkin form and leap backwards. Uh, drag there can just float. I will now remove it because I don't like deposing as a doggo. Okay, we have this speed up and then we have a relocate over here. Keep the tank moving quick. Oh, tank should be able to grab this. I don't need the DPS. I just need to wait for the tank to do his job, which is group everything up. He's going to do a massive pull, it looks like. I'm going to drop a stone skin totem over here because we have hunters coming through. I'm going to try and help the tank group these up. I'm going to hit that. That's down there. I'm being DPS'd quite a bit, or being damaged quite a bit. We're going to drop a stun totem right there in the middle. I'm going to grab this chain and drag it through. I'm going to knock everything back like that so this stuff is not standing in sanguine. We don't have Lahar in the group, so there's nothing that's going to survive all the chains. These just weren't group up tight in, tightly enough. People got impatient with the chains. So we're going to try and finish these off before we move on to the boss. Well, obviously, because we can't exactly start the pull with these guys. There we go. Not bad, not the cleanest I've ever seen, but it is very, very good overall. Use my Maelstrom to off heal there so we can start the boss fight at full HP. Okay, Tank says he breaks chain. So I just need to drag it out and let him break it. That's perfectly fine with me. We're going to drop all our stuff. We don't have... I could have held for a few seconds just to get the Doom Winds in, or rather get just get the Sundering in during Doom Winds. That's unfortunate. 
but it's not a huge deal. It's not as big of a deal as I make it out to be. I'm just annoyed that I keep messing up my openers all the time. But you know, that tends to happen when you, uh, when you zoop zoop. Okay, dragging this out. The druid is gonna get this, his chain broken first, then the other guy is gonna break it. I'm gonna break it last, I'm okay with that. Just gonna get closer. There we go. What the hell? Tr what the? Do you see this? Okay. The fuck? Did you see that shit? What the hell is wrong with this boss? No wonder this wasn't in the MDI. The dungeon's just too freaking buggy. This boss in particular is just bugged to shit. Like every, uh, every other freaking run, you just get a new bug. I've not seen that. Tank says he doesn't want me. I just said I'm used to it. <laughs> uh, nothing like a bit of self-deprecating humor to keep myself going. Okay, grounding spears coming down and waiting for it to go down. Then I'm gonna use ghost wolf form. Why? Because that way I get to uh, remove the slowdown. Okay, just letting the tank break. Maybe now. Okay, this time he, he, he did want me. We're going to use the group heal here just to help out. Have all my stuff. I can use everything during the group, group heal. I'm going to heal a whole bunch. And that's going to take some pressure off the healer. Because that intermission is very, very painful. Even when you break one at a time, it's really, really rough. Sometimes it's almost better to break uh, just all three at the same time. If the healer can pump enough HPS for that, and you have like a group-wide defensive, like an augmentation evoker, can give everyone scales or whatever. I think that's how that works. Okay, furry focus going through. I don't know if we have enough to actually... Oh, no, 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 no. Trying to just keep myself alive. I'm going to self-heal. I don't care about damage right now. I'm just trying to survive. There's the last chain. Oh, no. Uh, I'm going to reincarnate in DPS. Healing potion. Just We just need to survive this. He's got six more seconds. We got six seconds to kill this. Just need to keep zoog zooking really, really hard because I messed up and I stood in a swirly and died. Come on. Come on. That was really close. That could have been a wipe. Going to give him a movement speed totem over there. Letting him group everything up. Stone skin totem down for the bleeds. Another movement speed totem here. Keep the tank moving nice and quick. I don't have a reason to keep DPSing. The chains will do the damage here. The Feral Druid doesn't give a shit. He's just dropping bleeds and everything. We're going to go grab the birds. The birds can join this. I'm going to drop a stun totem on top of where we want to stun them with this. Here we go. Here come the chains. One more chain. There's always someone who doesn't use the chain. This time it's the tank. Tank, use chain. Okay, that's the last chain. I'm going to knock them all back as best I can. I'm going to kick that, keep them moving. Tank didn't use chain. Uh, we could have just one-shot everything, and it would have been the first time to do this. Uh, like, I've had groups one-shot this. This is a very easy one to one-shot, but what can you do? Sometimes it just doesn't work out. I think the tank might have been, like, stunned or hit or something. I don't know. I don't think there's anything that stuns there other than the spears, but what can you do? Not a big deal, though. We were still looking pretty good on time, in my opinion. 20 minutes after second boss. Not bad at all. I don't have the Windrush Totem to give here. That's unfortunate, but... Maybe I should start saving it for this rather than for the run after the boss. We'll see. I'm going to put a focus on this Lava Flare. Look at the other one. We're going to try and interrupt them when they start casting. There's one. I'm going to drop a Stun Totem. It's going to overlap with the Warrior's thing right when we need it to. Stone Skin Totem. I'm going to look at the Lava Bearer because he's the highest HP. And I'm going to start going to town with my DPS. I have all my cooldowns rolling, including Doom Winds. Tank is doing a great job kiting all these guys around. The Lava Bearer cannot be moved, so it's very important to keep him moving when the other enemies are dying. Lava Bearer is about to go down. Then this guy needs to get knocked back. I didn't know whether or not he would get uh, put in the sand. Like, I didn't know if he was in the Sanguine Pull from the Lava Bearer, so I just decided to knock him back and be safe. Looking at the Iron Torch, I'm going to put a focus on him if necessary. Actually, I'm going to kick these guys, and I'm going to look at the Bone Splitters. When they're doing their charge, and after that, they might do their Dragon Bone Spear. I'm going to use my Tarin stunt to interrupt them. Tank pulled these Lava Bearers. This is the second time today that I'm watching this group pull and get pulled like this. I actually really like it compared to the Commander in Sanguine. Like, pulling the Commander during Sanguine Week is just asking for the Commander to get healed to full, like, twice. <laughs> uh, okay, that got interrupted. Very nice. I didn't know what to do to interrupt it, to be honest with you. 
Pine Torch coming through. I got the mode of combustion. I'm going to use a defensive. I don't know how much that hurts. Lava Bearer is in some sanguine. I'm having trouble just figuring out what the heck to do. We got Dragon Bone Spears. We're going to knock those back. Hopefully that manages to get them. Ooh, I dropped my stun totem. I don't know if that was even good because they're standing in sanguine now. This is a bit messy. I don't know if I'm making it messier or better with my knockbacks, to be completely honest with you. But what I could do is just do more damage and focus less on knocking things back in the Dragon Bone Spear because the healer has been an absolute beast beast and keeping everyone up so maybe i shouldn't focus so much on that gonna have to probably kick one of these flares we accidentally pulled this guy that's going to be very very painful I'm use my group heal here to just get everyone back up to full health as soon as that finishes i'm tunneling hard into the commander i'm gonna drop i'm um, not gonna drop shit i'm gonna look to knock back when the melt the melt guys start getting low I'm gonna kick some of those melts because those actually really hurt. They target random people. Ah, eh, well, he's standing in two sanguine pulls. I didn't knock back on the right at the right time. Pulling the commander on sanguine is just asking for trouble, but I think it was an accidental body pull, not somebody being like, oh, we need commander for percent. Because we don't. I don't think we do at all. Now it's just a matter of DPSing down the commander. We can pull into the next group when the commander gets low. I don't think it's a huge time gain, so it's not exactly necessary to do that. Luckily, we did have the group heal available at the start of the pull with the commander, so we could just heal heal up the group and make sure nobody dies. This is actually pretty easy to kill uh, to die during the commander pull. Okay, we're gonna position here on the marker. I'm gonna drop my stone skin totem. I'm gonna kick that, keep everything moving. We're trying to get here. We're gonna drop a stun totem around the corner to make sure everything gets interrupted. That's over there. That actually grouped them up quite nicely. We're going to look at the Bone Splitter and we're going to try and CC him when he does his Bone Spear. Which should be soon. I think he's, he's going to cast it soon. I'm just trying to make sure I interrupt him. Dropping another Stone Skin Totem. No, I'm not. Uh, the cooldown we car is just bugging right now. It's just not showing me the correct values. Okay, Typhoon's coming through. Very good Typhoon. Bone Splitter just decided not to cast anymore. He kind of gave up. He was just like, screw it. I'm going to be buggy like the rest of this dungeon. I'm going to knock this guy back just so we don't have the Lava Bearer start casting something while he's in a Sanguine pull. There we go. That went well. I feel like I didn't do much DPS for that pull, which was probably just a mistake on my part. Looking at that Lava Flare in the background so we can interrupt it. Okay, it's grouped up. Very nice. Ooh, our Priest just got messed up. I think we can survive this. I'm using my Group Heal. We're going to use a Battle Res here on the Priest. Probably, probably the right call. I'm going to use my Doom Winds here. Keep going. Those Melts are hurting. We got Interrupts coming through for the Melts. We're going to use our Tauren Stun to interrupt some Melts. Group Heal has run out. We're going to kick a Melt. Those Melts hurt even on uh, Tyrannical, so be careful. We're going to... Oh, okay. We're grouping them into the Sanguine. Not exactly ideal. I'm going to knock them back again right about now just to get them away, away from the blacksmiths. One blacksmith left is going to get dragged through the sanguine a little bit. That's okay. 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 That group's taken care of. We have bloodlust available for this boss. We're going to do it on pull. Okay. We're bloodlusting this. Okay. This is going to hurt. I already feel that it's going to hurt. Since we just bloodlusted, I feel like I don't need to use any defensive cooldowns. I'm going to stand over here. Oh, I probably should have moved. I don't know. Oh, God. I should have just moved away. I've stopped doing that because I feel like I can finagle a way to do it, but I, I should just move away. Sacrifice a bit of DPS and call it a day. Waiting for the next jump. For this one, we're going to use a defensive. Probably use my defensive a little bit early here. Could have saved it a bit longer than I could maybe be able... Oh, we're going to help that evoker survive. Never mind. It doesn't matter that I used my defensive early. We're going to drop Doom Winds into a Thundering. We have new doggos available, wind strike proc, which is beautiful. Have the group heal available for this big intermission, or rather this big AOE. I'm gonna use the group heal and go to town. Try and do as much DPS as I possibly can. I don't have any procs going through, so the group heal isn't as massive as I would like it to be. Okay, we did manage to help out with the group heal. Not as much as I would like to, because we just didn't get any procs, but that's okay. We have another sundering coming through. There's another big AOE coming through. I'm gonna use the earth elemental, because it gives me 15% more health. Which is going to help me survive this. I'm looking at people's health bars to see if I need to help out. My guy, just get away. <laughs> just get away from me. Uh, he didn't know which way I wanted to go. Uh, healer went down again, but the boss is almost dead. We do not battle res this. We just kill the boss. Just kill the boss. Just kill the boss. There we go. I'm going to quickly res. 
Healer can release, actually. Yeah, the healer did the right call he released. We're waiting for these guys to move out of the way. We can jump up here, cut the path down a bit. Healer made the right call because he's going to be downstairs and we're going downstairs anyway. That makes perfect sense to me. We're going to drop this. We're going to move it over there. Just keep everyone moving nice and quick. If he wants to rescue, he can rescue. I think he already did rescue, so he can't right now. Gonna jump down like this. We're going to do a little tiny doggy hop. Not a big one, just a little bit of a hop. Looking at the tank. Going to off heal the tank. Going to off heal the druid. Healer's already here. So we're dropping Stone Skin Totem, Wind Fury Totem, looking at the bird, dropping all my cooldowns. Druid got hit by something, not sure what. I'm going to use my defensive here. I don't have the group heal available. I'll use the group heal on the next bird, because nothing else really hurts like the bird does. Bird's a dangerous word. You don't want to mess with the bird. The bird's a word. Dangerous word, bird, word, word, bird. I was trying to do something funny there. It didn't really work out, did it? What the heck happened to my camera there? Did you see that shit? Okay, we're looking at the Lava Mancer. We're going to try and focus the Lava Mancer. I can't knock these back or anything, so it's down to the tank to keep them moving out of the Sanguine. I'm going to try and finish this guy off while he's away. Okay, he died before I could even hit him properly. Trying to pump some damage into the Molten Armor. We're going to interrupt it. I interrupted the Lava thing. Somebody else interrupted the Molten Army. That's beautiful to see. Don't have a kick for this one, though. Lava Bolt's going to go through. Never mind. Draco took care of it. Thank you, Malfoy. Warden standing in some stuff for a second there because he had a bit of a cast. That's good. We did manage to move him. Now I can't really reach him, unfortunately, because he's standing in the middle of a lava puddle. I prefer not to stand in that. There we go. He's dead. We can go into the next group. We don't need to kill this next group with the bird. I didn't realize we were good on percent. We can actually skip all of this. We just need to run in a straight line like so, jump over the bags, and we're good. We can skip all of that. Hopefully there's no body pulls like there was with the commander. There aren't any. Beautiful. We have 10 minutes left to kill the last boss. This is going to be a really, really good run. We don't have Bloodlust available for it. I do have D-Curse. No, I don't have D-Curse because I'm stupid and I'm in the wrong talents. I really suck at using the right talents. Okay, we're going to let the warrior grab this so he doesn't have to move the boss around as much. I'm going to grab this. I should be using the curse. I'm just so stupid sometimes. I don't know why I always forget to change talents. Uh, we're going to drop all our cooldowns here even though her shield is coming up soon because if I hold my cooldowns for so long, it just sucks. I will hold my cooldowns for the next stun though. I think I should be fine. We have Ursal's Vortex down on this guy, but we got killed really, really quick. Magma Shield's coming through. I need to stay nearby so I can use my item. Moving away out of those swirlies. Going to help the healer survive. He has his trouble surviving. Our one and only battle res just died. I don't know if that's a reset or what. I think with 10 minutes we should be able to do it. Even with the person down. Quite unfortunate. I'm being hit by Molten Gold. I'm going to use my defensive here. I have the charge in. I don't like having the charge in. I really don't like having the charge in. I'm trying to cleave down the add. Here comes this shit. I'm going to wait for the swirlies to go away. I don't need to rush it. Somebody just failed their item. I'm going to charge in now. Two charges went in. I'm going to grab another item because somebody failed theirs and we were a person down. Trying to move out of this. Ooh, this looks like a wipey wipe. Yeah, that's a reset. I'm going to go stand and fire and let the tank reset. He's going to jump into adds and die. Oof. That's really rough. We do have enough time to kiss. There's still time to, so it's not a big deal, but it could have been a lot, lot better than this. We're going to drop a movement speed here. The druid refuses to give us movement speed. It's a little bit annoying, but what can you do? I can't force him to give me the roar. Jumping across the middle there with my little wind gust. We're going to do the skip again, obviously. There's no reason to kill these. So we stand at the bonfire, and then we run across towards the bags. We jump over the bags, and we're good. Looking behind us to see if anyone's going to body pull. Very nice. I'm going to drop a wind fury totem, and I'll drop a stone skin totem when I see the warrior charge in like that. I'm going to drop Doggos into Doomwinds, into Sundering, into Stormstrike Spam. I'm just going to focus on using my Doomwinds window here, as well as the Doggos. So while I have my cooldowns rolling, I want to keep beating the shit out of the boss. Then once my cooldowns are done for, I can switch over to grabbing the little gold trinket thing. I'm still annoyed that I have the curse on me. That's really, really stupid, I feel like. Dank had to go far to grab a trinket, so the boss is moving quite a bit. I'm going to hard switch to this. There's the magma shield. I don't know how that evoker keeps dying so much. Okay, she's stunned. We're going to jump forward. Doggos into Sundering. I'm going to use the group heal to try to get everyone topped off while I'm doing so much damage. Should have used it sooner while I was dropping the Sundering and everything, but we got everyone to full HP, so I feel like we're good. I'm going to grab this right away just to be sure that I have it for the next intermission. I have an orb, so again, I am safe. Add is being dropped. We're going to drop a slow totem on the add. I'm going to try and cleave the add. It's not hitting me, so I should be able to beat the shit out of the ad. I'm actually going to switch hard to the ad so that we don't have issues of the ad chasing us down. The ad, 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 ad. 
I'm gonna drop a heal on the priest so he doesn't die immediately. And drop this thing down. She is stunned. We have Sundering and Doomwinds up in a few seconds. We're gonna drop this. Waiting for Doomwinds. Doomwinds into Sundering. Okay, we got our big hits down while she was stunned. That's massive. That's incredible. That was a lot of extra damage. She takes a lot of extra damage while she's stunned. That's why I keep talking about it. It's actually very important to make use of that to make this boss fight shorter. Bloodlust one minute. Okay, I see that. Thank you. Looking for treasures. I'm going to go grab treasures. This one's really far away, but I'm just going to grab it anyway. Hopefully I don't pull that group. If I pull that group, my group is going to hate me forever. Okay, we're good. I have a treasure. She's going to start casting. Swirlies are there. They're dangerous. I'm looking to heal the evoker. Waiting for the Swirlies to go away. Okay, somebody managed to take her out. Drug Doggos into Sundering. That Evoker's still dying from the damage over time. The Priest just needs to heal more. I don't know what the hell the Priest is doing, but he's not healing. We have a Battle Res available for that. Bloodlust is in 20 seconds. I still have an item available, so I'm not going to refresh it. I'm not going to grab the treasures. Yep, I see it, my guy. I see it. Okay, she's going to cast the shield. If I get over to this side, that Swirlies going to be gone by the time I can charge in. We're going to Bloodlust right here. Doom wins into Sundering, and she's gone. There we go. Timed. Pretty nice. Could have been better. I got the Dragon Scale Ripper. I don't know if anyone needs that. I'm assuming not, because it's agility, and nobody here can use the agility weapon. Not bad. How much rating did we get for that? 11 rating. That's actually really good. Holy shit. We are now 6 rating away. Whatever I time next is going to give me... 2.8k rating. Thank you for the run. And we're gonna leave party. Teleport out. This druid was blasting the DPS. I'm very impressed. He did pad his damage a bit on the chain pulls, but you know, it ended up working out because we didn't manage to wipe out the adds with the chains like we expected to. Overall, he just out DPS me on every single fight. Sorry, I say he, I mean they. I say he as a default, I'm sorry. At the very least, I can always point at my interrupts and be like, haha, I interrupted the most. And I feel like it's a good thing because in high, very high fortified keys, if I were ever to do them, that's going to come in handy. Because this, on a very high fortified key, each of these interrupts is basically a life saved. So it's very good to get a good habit of interrupting as much and as often as you can. Anyway, we're going to go and do something at 21 and hopefully finish 2.8k rating. We're getting started with a 21 Halls of Infusion with the group you see on the screen. Feeling pretty good about this group. Got put together pretty quick. That thing's stunned all the way in the back. I'm going to try and get the Expulse Interrupt on it. There we go. There's the Expulse. We're going to drop all our cooldowns now. And we can zoog zoog. I failed to use my Doom Winds. I thought I did use them, but I didn't. Kind of whiffed it. I was too far away while I was pressing the button, which is funny. So far, so good. We have an extra group being pulled by the Hunter. I'm not sure why that exactly is happening, but we, it is. Gonna put a focus on this. I'm gonna focus interrupt that. Beautiful. Spear Flurry is coming through. It got interrupted because he was out of range. By he, I mean the tank. I'm getting my ass kicked by the containment beam. Hurts pretty bad. I'm gonna interrupt things with this beautiful little sundering that we had available. We seem to be going down the left path. We're probably gonna do the left path and then add, add, pull the extra thing and then we'll still have the skip available to us. I feel like going down the right path, and this is something that Arca explained to me, going down the right path is better because then you can just grab it from here. You just have to pull the one group that's on top of the thing, on top of the thing that you use for immortality. So if we want immortality here, if that's why we're pulling this, uh, we could have done it the other way around. I'm gonna knock this. Uh, I tried to knock this back, but it didn't really work out because it was too close to the wall, so it just didn't want to budge. It was angled weird. I couldn't do much about it. I'm gonna finish this off before we go into the next group. It looks like that's what the tank wants to do. Beautiful. Waiting for the tank to get a bit of aggro. We have this expulse. We're gonna interrupt it. I'm gonna use my defensive here because there's a lot of shit going on. And I feel like the containment apparatus might actually mess me up. We're gonna drop a stun totem, the first one of the run. <laughs> because I'm a bit of a dum-dum and I just didn't pay attention and didn't use it. These are all standing in Sanguine. That's unfortunate, but they didn't stand for very long. Tank's pretty good about moving them out of it. Things just die very quickly. We're also grabbing this group. These guys are going to go down soon. I'm going to... I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to kick that Expulse. I'm going to knock all of them back. And I'll force the tank to move forward. He can charge in, get some rage that way as well. Just keeping my AoE DPS going. We're going to drop a stone skin totem while I have a bit of time with my globals. Enemies should be dying here in a second. So we need to keep moving, need to keep it kiting. That's beautiful. Spear flurry is going down. That's okay. Tank outranged it, so it got reset. I see. So kiting these guys is very, very good. So if you're out of range when they finish the cast, it goes on cooldown, but they don't actually cast it. So kiting these is good even outside of Sanguine. Okay, I'm learning stuff. Very good. Good thing it took me the entire season to learn that. I'm going to do... Oh, this is a very, very, very big, very 
Whoa, I'm going to knock everything back because there's cast bars that I didn't want to see go through. We're going to drop a stunt over on top of, top of that. That should take care of some of these. Ooh, I don't know if that was intentional or not, but we're getting a lot of CC through. I'm going to use the group heal, try to keep people up through this crazy amount of containment beams going through. I think there's four containment orbs here. Containment apparatus is whatever you want to call it. I'm going to use cooldowns here. Kick that. Expulse. Don't have any stuns available or anything like that. I don't have a kick for demoralizing thing. Just trying to survive. Stay behind the tank, behind the group, but in front of uh, whatever the heck. Come on, die. Okay, good. We managed to kill it before it cast the expulse. I don't have any groups available, or many groups, any heals available for the group. We're going to help the rogue out a little bit. Okay, we're going to drop a slow totem. Just keep these guys slowed down so the tank has an easier time kiting them. Trying to do some more off healing. Okay, we got through the rough part. I wasn't ready for that double pull. I don't think the group was ready for it either. Okay, we managed to recover. Healer is at 42% mana. We should wait for the healer to be full mana before we pull. We're dropping a banquet. May as well sit down and eat with the healer. Okay, we seem to be good to go. We're going to bloodlust in phase two. That's what we agreed to. We're going to drop a wind fury totem, a stone skin totem. The stone skin totem is just for show. Like, it's just something to have. I again don't have the poison cleansing totem because I keep forgetting to change my talents. I am horrible. I feel like I've been in the wrong talents for every group. Hunter finally ran into the dome. I'm going to drop a full set of cooldowns here. I'm not going to hold it for the adds. We're probably going to hit 20 no matter what. I'm going to hold my wind, wind rush totem as well so that I can give it to people when it's P2 and the rings are bigger. Just going to help the hunter with some heals because he doesn't have many ways to survive this. They're very squishy. Probably the squishiest class right now. 20% means I keep using my cooldowns. Still holding my Windrush Totem. Don't need to speed these guys up when the circles are small. When they're big, that's when we do need to speed them up. Spark Wally coming through. I'm just going to try to stay on top of the tank as well as on top of the other DPS. That way we don't walk into each other's stuff. Again, trying to keep the Hunter alive with some off heals here. Rocked my stock, uh, whatchamacallit, my Spore Cloak. Okay, these, did these just, just get MD'd? I think these got just, just got MD'd. That's unfortunate. I wasn't ready for that, so I was a little bit flustered by it. We have doggos available and we have, uh, whatchamacallit, sundering available for the adds. We're going to try and group up the adds. Getting those, just want them to group up. Going to drop a stun totem on top of them. Going to drop all our cooldowns. Going to try and kill them quickly. Almost have doom winds available for them as well. We're going to drop them, try and drop doom winds, trying to hit all of them. They need to stay closer to the tank, to the boss. We're going to move them over there. Probably freaked someone out right now. Okay, now we're just waiting for the boss to actually... Okay, 20 stacks as predicted. We're going to Bloodlust here. Probably should have held my Doom Winds. I don't know. I wasted my cooldowns on the adds right there. That's kind of bad. If we wipe here, I'm going to blame myself. I'm going to use the group heal here to keep everyone nice and healthy. Probably should have used it on the second one because Bloodlust is active right now. So the healer should not have trouble keeping us up. We're looking to see who's going to get the power overload. Is it going to be me? It's not. I'm going to drop the Windrush Totem here so these guys can get away from us very quickly. I'm trying to see where these are going to land. Okay, I managed to avoid all of them. Didn't get hit by any. If I get hit by one, I'm dead. So I can use a healing potion here to keep myself nice and healthy. Very good. Healer can focus on other people that are low at, on HP. It's looking pretty good. Power overload's coming through. I'm going to move immediately along with the rogue over to this side i'm gonna jump like this rogue got dispelled i did not which almost ended up killing me spark wally's coming through i move in this direction trying not to overlap with anyone else oh man i guess the rogue was very very low so you needed to be dispelled i understand that now uh, we're gonna give people water walking here you go bud here you go bud here you go bud here you go bud and here i go bud very nice i think i didn't give it to someone yeah, the rogue. The poor rogue didn't get it. Trying to, like, top off on heals. Don't have a movement speed totem. Everyone's kind of low. We could sit down and eat. Nobody died, so we don't need that. But I think the priest is out of other food, so he needs to use feasts. Going to put a focus on this one. Looking at the other shock trooper. The one I can focus, I can interrupt if I need to. Okay. Nice, we got all the interrupts. The priest is good about using the fear. I've seen him use it multiple times. That's more than most priests I've seen. Making very good use of it. It's beautiful to see. We are absolutely destroying this group, which is nice. I don't have a poison cleansing thing. I have two frogs on me, so I need to get just get the heck away from them. I'm going to knock all of these down because they're slowed in the middle of a sanguine pile. I need to move down there. I Again, I do not have the gosh darn poison cleanse. I need to stay away from these frogs. Frogs are very scary. If I if I get to 10 stacks, I believe at 11 stacks, that's when you actually get uh, CC'd. Or, well, not CC'd, sorry. D you die. I was trying to do CC'd. That's why I said CC'd. There's still two frogs running after me. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and murder them with a sundering, just so I can take that pressure off of myself. Trying to kick this. Never mind, the fear came through. We're gonna knock them back so we interrupt those dazzles. I don't want the dazzles to go through. If the tank gets disoriented by the dazzle, he drops aggro. That kills the rest of us. Disorients basically stop mobs from hitting you because if you take damage, you're gonna get, uh, like the disorient gets removed. So the mobs are coded in such a way that they don't try to hit you when you are, da when you are um, disoriented trying to burst everything here so that we don't have to run away from the frogs there we go i think we're succeeding again i should have poison cleansing totem here the reason i don't have it is because i'm a big old dumb dumb that forgets to change his talents when he walks into a dungeon i'm running my brackenhide talents where poison cleansing totem is useless because there's no poison in brackenhide it's just diseases i focused the circle one i'm gonna look at the purple one i'm gonna kick purple i'm gonna drop a stun totem no i'm not i don't have a stun totem I'm going to interrupt this by knocking it back. I'm sorry, but I cannot let those go through. That is wipe worthy. I'm going to drop Doom Winds so I can recover it by the time we're at the boss. I know that it's very annoying to have to deal with my knockbacks. If it was a knockup, it would be better. But for Sanguine, I like to run the knockback rather than the knockup. I don't know if I called it the knockback instead of the knockup or whatever. But yeah, you get the idea. We're going to kick that. Hunter had the same idea. I'm trusting that there's going to be someone who is going to interrupt the uh, actual heal. Maybe I should interrupt the actual heal because everyone here is trying to kick as much as they can. Which is good. That's good. That's what you should do. But you need to have a dedicated someone who's going to interrupt the heal. The heal should be coming up soon. I'm the only one with a kick available right there. So it's good that I held it. The reason I know that is because of this little interrupts thing over here. Okay, the caster lady is almost dead. This guy's standing in the sanguine. I did not realize that she was about to die. Genuinely, I forgot about Sanguine. I'm gonna be honest with you. I forgot about Sanguine. So we let this guy heal up quite a bit. I should have slowed my DPS on the lady until this guy was done with his uninterruptible channel thing. That's completely my bad. I could have stopped that. He didn't need to die there. I'm trying to finish these guys off because I can't actually reach this guy. May as well pad my DPS, right? There we go. We managed to switch to a lightning bolt with that last hit, which is perfect. I'm going to try and put down a world marker here. And another world marker over there. And that's where we should kite between. Hopefully people understand what that means. I'm pretty sure they do. Overpowering Croak is coming through. Tank should be moving in that direction. I'm going to use the group heal here because people are very low. Tank is kiting. Gulp should be coming through soon. I'm going to drop a slow totem. Tank can stand in that. Perfect. Tank understands that tank should go stand on top of that circle. Just so we have a nice kite between the two. But I'm going to trust the tank to know what to do. And we'll see if he proves me wrong. My sport cloak got triggered because I'm a squishy little shaman. That belly slam is very scary. Overpowering croak is going to come through here in a second. I'm going to use my defensive for it. There's my defensive. Okay, tank is kiting. We're going to try and drop another slow totem behind us. I'm going to drop a stun totem on top of that just to make them all get stunned. Because the tank didn't kite far enough. We have the dome coming through. We're going to hit them with Sundering. They're getting killed instead of just kiting. Which is a waste of DPS. We could be doing single target DPS to the boss. Instead of hitting the little froglets. That's okay. Tank doesn't understand the kite tactics. Which is perfectly fine. Because the group's kind of just zigzagging through it I guess. We have the overpowering croak. I'm going to use my earth elemental. To give me 15% more HP. We again don't. I'm just going to knock these guys back. They're going to travel back to me. I don't have the slow totem. Now I have the slow totem. I have three stacks of this. I need to run in circles around the boss. Tank is now moving instead of moving later. That's completely right. He really doesn't understand the... Tactic. That's unfortunate, but we can just kill these guys. I have six stacks of poisons. That's because there is no one who can actually remove poisons from me because I didn't grab the poison cleansing totem like a dumbass. That is something I should be running for this fight. I don't have anything to help myself, so I'm going to self-heal. I have a healing potion available if shit goes south. We're going to drop a slow totem on the frog so people can kite them. Things should be kiting more. You should be kiting when the third swirly appears. That's when the tank should start kiting. No, no later than that. After that, you just kind of sit there and you deal with it. Boss should be dead before the next inter intermission, hopefully. We're going to drop a heal here to top everyone off. Otherwise, the next uh, AoE is just going to wipe us all out. We're going to try and kill this frog so whoever's kiting it doesn't have to worry anymore. I think it was the hunter. It is a beast mastery hunter, so he doesn't need to stop to cast, which is fine. I'm going to give everyone movement speed. going to relocate it over there. So the tank also gets movement speed. Sorry, I'm scratching my nose, so it's just, if I sound weird, that's why. Grand Banquet going down in the background because the healer's trying to grab some mana because he ran out of regular food. We're moving to the side. I'm going to use... Uh, it's on cooldown. I learned recently that I can actually use... Okay, I got MD. We're going to kick that heal. We're going to put the target on focus. I learned recently that I can, can use Thunderous Paws to reset that. The one time I thought I couldn't was because it was on cooldown. 
I had just used Thunderous Paws re earlier than that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's a talent that when you turn into a Ghost Wolf, you gain movement speed and you remove movement speed impairing effects from yourself. Okay, just the Earth Shaker left and prepare to get into the next group. Looking to see if we'll pull the extra group. We won't. That's good. Play it safe here. We're not that strapped for time. I'm going to put a focus on that thing. I'm going to try and remove this. MD is not coming through. Oh, that's a very dangerous breath. I didn't realize it was coming through because of the angle of the boss. We're going to drop a stun totem on this group. Keep him nice and still. We have wind strike procs going through. We have doggos. Rogue accidentally walked back into the stun of the Earthshaker because we're fighting on a slope. When you fight on a slope, you basically give up on the fact that you just give up. <laughs> The game's very bad at projected te textures on the slopes. Like this circle just basically just does not show up when you fight on a slope. So you have no idea where it, when exactly it's going down. The only thing you could take into account is the fact that it might be on cooldown. And that could be a way for you to tell, but I don't trust it. Okay, we're going to drop a Tarn stun on top of that. We had a fear go through from the priest. We don't have anything for this. I mean, I had the knockback, but I really didn't want a knockback. I feel like the group is getting annoyed by my knockbacks. Maybe I'm just overthinking it, but it's no big deal. This isn't a very dangerous group. The next group, I'm going to have all of my CC for. That's going to be awesome. We have Bloodlust available for the next boss. We're in a good spot here. I'm going to drop a stun totem on top of that. Keep things moving nice and quick. We have an MD coming through, probably. Oh. That's very scary. We're going to kick that wind buffet because everyone's kind of low from the deep chill. So we don't need the wind buffet to hit someone for like 200k. I have a knockback available if things start, start getting very low like this ice caller is. I'm going to drop a nice nice big knockback to make sure it doesn't die underneath the dragon. Like right about now. Tank's doing a good job. We're going to knock those guys back. Just make sure that they die far away from the dragon. I'm going to remove this with my ghost a wolf. There we go. Beautiful. And by this, I meant the slow from the dragon gets removed by the ghost wolf. The deep chill, like I talked just a bit ago. Beautiful. I feel like I did a good job with that knockback to make sure the dragon doesn't get healed. I'm very proud of my knockbacks. We wait for the healer to fill up their mana. This is ex extremely healer intensive. We're going to bloodlust on pull. I will have doom winds during bloodlust. There we go. Bloodlust on pull already gone through. I don't have sundering. I don't have anything. I'm just going to wait for my cooldown window to overlap absolutely everything. Cross cyclone going through that way. We're good. We can now position it close to this. We might be able to, I think we will be able to actually DPS the boss through this thing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And drop doom winds into sundering into wind strike spam. We're going to drop doggos because they give us a 15% buff. That's massive. A buff, 15% buff to physical damage, that is. Oh, goodness me. Get that out of there. More wind strikes, new doggos. Got to make sure that the tornado doesn't go on top of any crystals. Tank wants the position over here. We won't be able to DPS through the thing anymore, but we will be safe and we don't have to move away far. I'm just going to apply my frost shock and flame shock. I'm going to use my defensive here because I'm kind of low. And just to get it rolling, we are already on top of this. This was extremely good positioning by the tank. I'm pretty sure that was intentional. That's amazing. I'm going to drop doggos. We're going to drop group heal just to help out the healer because I see that everyone is low. This is a good time to use the group heal, I believe. I just destroyed the crystal. Might be. We have the other one that's over there, but we won't be able to melee DPS through it. That's unfortunate. Actually, we will because the tank was extremely quick to recognize what happened. I positioned a crystal on top of one of these... Uh, Safe crystal. I positioned a tornado on top of one of the safe crystals. That was completely my bad. Glacial surge is coming through. We're going to use our shocks. I'm going to use a self heal until I can get back to the boss. We have another set of doom wind coming through. I'm going to hold it. I'm use a potion. I'm going to try and get some maelstrom to heal our rogue. I'm trying my best. We're going to give it to this guy. Hailstorm's coming through. I'm going to give it to myself. I'm going to use this thing to give myself 15% more max HP trying to help out with the healing i'm gonna heal myself the rest is not my issue trying to keep myself alive it's so hard for the healer right now oh i just could not get any maelstrom to save myself like whatsoever <laughs> that was really rough the health bars were very scary there 150k hps by the healer which is incredible and we still couldn't pull through that's we almost couldn't pull through very impressive healing very impressive healing. I'm going to put a focus on the ice collar. We're pulling a dragon along with that. I'm going to try and focus on the dragon. Deep chill is going to go through. I'm hoping for a mass dispel. I'm going to use my defensive here. I'm going to focus interrupt that heal. Tank is very low. I think I ripped aggro for a second there. I'm going to 
kick. I don't have a kick available. Okay, I think we managed to kill it. Never mind. There's the little aqua links. We didn't manage to kick it. I need to get out of that circle. This is very sketchy. We're hoping not to reset. Tank just dragged them past this. They're going to reset. Don't point that at me. I am so scared. Okay, that thing died. These guys reset over to the original position. When you drag the first two mobs or any mobs past these two pillars, you basically reset them. It's like a little cheese prevention by Blizzard because you, what you could do is you could pull the whole thing and put it up there and then you don't have to worry about this bullshit thing that go, comes down the gauntlet and knocks you back. If you don't have to worry about that, this gauntlet is not as difficult. Okay, we have a position to stand in. I'm gonna drop my Doomwins here and I'll recover it by the boss. I think that's a good idea. I'm gonna drop a stun totem on top of all of these bad boys. Sanguine's gonna be coming through soon, I think. I can't see exactly what's dying. The title, the Ragers don't actually drop Sanguine. Uh, now everything is in Sanguine. Okay, we're gonna kick him to keep him moving. I'm gonna Tarn stun off of that. I'm gonna... God damn it, I wasn't thinking at all. Well, we got we get to do the walk of shame, or the run back of shame. The infuser's coming in. There's an inundate. I'm out of range for the inundate. I freaking hope. Okay, I am. By the time I get back, I'll be able to use my group heal. Maybe I should save my group heal for the boss. This is tyrannical. This shouldn't be that bad. Inundate's coming through. Aqueous Barrier gets interrupted by somebody else. I can kick the Boiling Rage. Flash Flood coming through. I gotta get the heck away from her. Okay. Bit by bit, we're just gonna take her out. I'm glad I just didn't die. Just gonna try and kill that. I, I, I wasn't sure who was gonna interrupt what. The people are very, um, how should I put this? Stingy with their kicks. Flash Flood coming through again. We're using our Flame Shock and our, our Earth Shock. No, that, that, that isn't a thing anymore. Unenhancement Shaman. What I meant is my Frost Shock. Okay, there we go. We have one little extra guy. Do we have one little extra guy? No, it's just this guy. When he's when he is dead, we can move on to the boss fight. That's beautiful. Five minutes until bloodlust. Ten minutes, 40 seconds until it times out. I didn't die, so I don't need to refresh my food buff, but I'm just going to sit here and munch a little bit. Just a little bit, little bit of a snack for the last boss and potentially the last boss of the series. If we don't, uh, if we get six rating, we tie, we beat the series or we beat the challenge. We're going to drop all our cooldowns here. By the time we get back from the intermission, we should be ready to use all of our cooldowns again. We might be able to get two Sundrings in. Tank got knocked back. Now he's spell reflecting the Focus Deluge, which is amazing. That's going to give us a bunch of DPS from the tank. Beautiful to see. I love playing Prot Warrior on this boss fight. It's just so much fun. I put the tank in an sort of a shitty situation because I put orbs near him. I shouldn't be standing this close to the tank. I'm just going to self-heal here a little bit. I'm a little bit scared. I should be able to get one more Sundering in before we go. There we go. There's a Sundering and a couple of Storm Strikes, and here comes the intermission. Beautiful. Yeah, the idea is to not stand near the tank. That way, these orbs that spawn, they spawn on top of people, so you want to move away from the tank so you don't have to put the tank in a situation where he gets knocked back into the orbs or has to move away. The reason it's very important for the tank not to have to move away is because... I'm just going to stand here because this protects you. I'm going to move over to the other side. The reason it's important for the tank not to get... Uh, knocked away or move away from the boss is because the boss will straight up just stop hitting uh the tank and hit someone else if he can't reach them god damn it i didn't realize that was gonna happen i'm gonna knock this back in the direction of the group good it got taunted i have the tarn stun available i'm gonna use the tarn stun here in a second when i see some inundates going through like right now that's a good time i didn't realize that was happening we're gonna sunder to interrupt another inundate I have a stun totem for the last chick. No, I don't because it's too soon. We do have a rogue. Would be nice if he used the stun. I'm pretty sure he did. It's just probably on cooldown. I'm just being critical for no reason. I could have dropped the stun totem sooner. Okay, we're dropping doggos. We're dropping wind fury totem. We have doom winds available again, like I said we would. We don't have sundering available because we used it to interrupt the mobs. I'm going to use group heal here because we don't have all the cooldowns from the healer available. I stood in that shit. I'm going to use a defensive out of panic. Trying to self-heal. Oh, I'm definitely panicking. I'm going to drop my Sundering now. Focus Deluge is being reflected by the tank again. That's a huge chunk of damage that he's been able to do. I feel pretty safe here from the orbs, unless some of them, like, ninja through the middle of the boss. Like, that. I've seen that happen. Like, the orb just comes out of the boss and just straight up murders you. Super sneaky ninja orb. Use the healing potion there. Probably wasn't necessary. I have a proc going through. We have doggos. Time to use doggos. going to drop a flame shock on him and get dashed away okay that's the second intermission i don't know what percent the boss was at i wasn't paying attention to that i need to close this it's bothering me i'm gonna drop a windrush totem because we have the tank on top of us we're going to reposition the windrush totem here for the tank 
I'm going to jump like this. Tank has the same idea. I'm going to go left and I want the tank to see that I'm going left. I'm going to interrupt her. I have plenty of CC. We're going to drop a stun totem right here in the middle. That should interrupt one. Okay. It could have interrupted two, but this one just refused to start casting it. I have knockbacks available. I'm not going to use them. I have sundering available. I'm going to save it for the boss this time. Good. We have one trapped and one is being fought over there by the hunter. Hunter needs some loving. I'm going to give him some healing. There's another one coming through. I'm glad I healed him because I think that made a difference. I'm going to knock him back when it casts. Knock him back when it ca it casts. Like, what am I... Knock back. I don't want that inundate to go through. That's a lot of damage. People need to use their CC. That rogue needs to use a stun. I didn't see him use one now. He, he really should because that hurts really bad. We have Bloodlust available for this last one. This should be the last time we do this. If people do their damage properly... Especially with Bloodlust, right? Use my group heal again. I have it available. That should keep us nice and healthy. This should be the boss going down here with six minutes to spare. We have Doggos again. Reset our Storm Strike. Keep resetting Storm Strike with other means. Another Lightning Bolt. And there we go. 12 Aspect Fragments. Oh, beautiful. 2,806 rating. 12 rating from this run. That's beautiful. I'm going to ask the Hunter if he needs those. I'm just going to check his gear and then I'll see if he needs them. No, he has Myth Tier gloves so we don't need to give this to the hunter well played friends and that's pretty much it for this episode and for this series because we hit 2.7k rating what no 2.8k why did i say 2.7k that was never the goal <laughs> i don't know i'm just flustered because i'm excited because we beat the series we beat the challenge i should say so we hit 2806 rating that is with a best run of underrod plus plus 21 on tyrannical according to raider io we have 74 runs total but that doesn't include runs where somebody left early or somebody went offline and we didn't finish the key. 14 of them are underwrought runs. That is our most run dungeon. Our least run dungeon is actually Neltharus, which makes sense. Neltharus freaking sucks to run. People don't know how to use chains until you get to like 20s. And even then it's a bit iffy about who knows how to use chains. So I tend to avoid that dungeon early on when I don't need the rating. And I'm just farming crests. Because it's a lot easier to get crests in like a Vortex Pinnacle or a Freehold 16 or 17. Rather than a Neltharus 16 or 17. And my buffs are running out. That's how long I've been standing here trying to record an outro this is like my third attempt i just ramble on and on and on and nobody wants to listen to that anyway i want to take this opportunity to just thank all of you thank you so much for watching the videos for supporting me for letting me know in comments what i should improve what i could do better giving me suggestions about how i should edit the content or just produce the content in general i appreciate all of those the feedback is immensely appreciated a very special thank you to the channel members vanderloo which was the first member kriva who joined shortly after and peaceful who just recently joined you guys rock I really appreciate it. You guys are spending your real life money, your real human dollar dues or euros or whatever the hecks on supporting me in my little YouTube adventure. And I appreciate that immensely. So do know you are very much appreciated. I'm going to say appreciated about 724 more times by the end of the video. But yes, this does bring it to an end. Oh, what the heck? Get... Get out of here. You're ruining my shot with your Razageth skin mount, with your tiny little arms. Get out of here. Jokes aside, this is it for the Shaman series. The next series is going to start in season three. We're going to be playing a healer. We haven't yet decided which healer it is. Right now, there is a poll up. It's the top link in the description. You can go vote if you haven't already. You get to choose which class I'm going to play as a healer in season three. Right now, it's looking like a mist weaver. If you like this outcome, make sure you go vote and make sure that it happens. If you don't like this outcome, make sure you go vote and you make sure that somebody else wins or somebody some other class wins in short go vote make sure that you get what you want i'm going to take this moment to make a little announcement there might not be a video on saturday because i have to travel to my hometown to take care of some personal things i'm not 100 percent sure yet whether or not i will have to skip it but i'm going to do my best not to have to skip it but that's enough from me i hope you enjoyed the video if you did drop a like let me know what you liked about it in a comment let me know what you liked about this series in a comment i would love to know what you guys thought about the series as a, as a whole i changed a lot of things in the series regarding how i produce my video so let me know if you have any feedback, if you have any suggestions, requests, or just you want to call me a big meanie poo, poo head for not saying the things that you want me to say or doing the things that you want me to do. Let me know that as well. I appreciate the feedback all the same. But that brings us to the end of the Shaman series. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next series.